Hey, Diane Bolin here. I have for you this week the next in our series of foundational movements that our bodies can do. As this month, we're exploring these different movements and looking at ways that we can strengthen and improve our flexibility and mobility through these movements to help us with everyday tasks. So this week, we're going to look at the push and pull movements that are done in the vertical plane or kind of laying down sort of thing. And those are two things, the push up and the row. Now don't go running screaming out of the room. It's going to be simpler than that. I will show you some modifications that you can do for any fitness level to work these same muscles. We're not gonna get down on the floor and bang out 100 push-ups. Don't worry. So stay tuned. What you will need for today's workout is a set of dumbbells. So you're gonna want dumbbells that you're able to pull in a movement like this. We're not going overhead today, so no worries about that. And as always, Grab your water bottle. You will also need a sturdy chair or a bench for one of our modifications of the row. So gather up those things and meet me back here. It's important when we look at the push and the pull movements to understand that we should do them together. And the reason for that is they work opposing muscles. So the muscles we use to push something away are different than the muscles we use to pull something towards us. And that's true of our upper body or lower body. So when we look at these movements, we're going to look at opposing muscles. First, we'll look at the push-up. Now, there are different ways to modify the push-up. Let's start on the ground. One of the most common modifications is from the knees. So we're gonna get our knees about hip distance apart, have our hands so that our wrists and shoulders are in line, and then we're gonna come down to the floor. Then holding your core tight, you're gonna push back up to the knee. And then as you get stronger, you can just hover to the floor without coming down. Once you've finished your set, come back into a child's pose and stretch those shoulders out. If you've got the movement down, then you can go into the full push-up. You can start out the same way, by going all the way down to the floor, resetting, and then pushing yourself up, back up. And again, as you get stronger, you can always do these slowly. You'll strengthen your muscles faster if you do the slower movement. Now, if you're not quite ready to go to the floor, you can use a countertop, a chair, or even the wall to do your push-ups. The way you would do a wall push-up, you want your wrist and your shoulder still in line, placing your hands shoulder distance apart. The distance you move your feet out from the wall will determine how difficult it is. So you're going to come down to the wall and back. You're going to find that you need to come up on your toes a little bit most likely to do this movement. And the further back you are, the more difficult it becomes. Always want to keep your back flat. So that is our push-up. Whichever variation you are comfortable using, whether against the wall or against a countertop or on your knees on the floor or the full-on traditional push-up. The opposing movement for that push is a pull. And the way to strengthen that is by doing a row. We're going to do that row 
with our dumbbells. So go ahead and grab your dumbbells. I'm going to show you first the standing version, and then I will show you the seated version. So the standing version, we're going to get a stance with our feet about between hip and shoulder distance apart, nice and stable, soft knees, hinge the hip back into that hip hinge position. We're going to bring our hands down to our sides. Let those arms fall. Very important to keep your back flat. And then the motion starts actually with our shoulders. So shoulders and then arms into a pull. Don't think of pushing with your hands. Think of pulling with your shoulders and your triceps. Now, if you notice, I have the dumbbells so that the head of it is pointing straight ahead. Then we're going to take and turn the dumbbell so that our palms are facing forward. This works a slightly different set of muscles. And lastly, we're going to turn it so the back of our hand is facing forward. And again, working a slightly different set of muscles, all the while keeping your back nice and flat. If you have some lower back issues or knee or hip issues where it's not really comfortable for you to stand like that, there's an easy modification to do. Grab your sturdy chair or stool. Come close to the edge of your chair. Again, your feet are going to be between hip and shoulder distance apart. And this time you're going to use the chair support, hip hinge forward. But remember that we're initiating this movement by squeezing our shoulder blades together. Keeping our back nice and flat. And then turning the dumbbell. Let's rework the other set of muscles. And the last set. Keep those wrists neutral. And there you have the push and the pull to work your upper body with our latest foundational movement. For the push-ups and the rows, we're gonna look at eight to 10 repetitions to begin with. Once you get that going, you can add another set of eight to 10 reps. Once you've built up to three sets, then you can increase your repetitions per set up to about 12. And that should give you a good strengthening flexibility increasing, mobility increasing, exercise for the upper body, push pull. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. That allows me to continue to bring you content like this that you, my viewers, have requested. And speaking of that, make sure you drop comments below because I use those comments to determine what topics I talk about next. I am here for you. So let's hear those topics. And most importantly, see you next week.